On this week's episode, we're visiting the Biltmore Estate in Asheville, North Carolina. The Biltmore was built by George Washington Vanderbilt II in the late 1800s and is still the largest privately owned home in the United States. And we're going to share with you a little bit of history of how all this came to be. Then we're going on site and taking you inside to show you just some of the beauty, prestige, and magnificence this home exhibits. So come along and let's start our adventure. We have a lot of ground to cover. 178,000 square feet on 8,000 acres worth. Right here on History and Relics. George Washington Vanderbilt II, also referred to sometimes as the third, was born in 1862 and was the youngest of William Henry Vanderbilt's children and grandson of Commodore Cornelius Vanderbilt, founder of the Vanderbilt Empire and who made his wealth in shipping, steamboat operation, and the railroads. In the 1880s, George began to make regular visits with his mother, Maria Louisa Kassam Vanderbilt, to the Asheville, North Carolina area. He loved the scenery and the climate so much that he decided to build a summer house in the area, which he later called Little Mountain Escape. In a similar fashion, his older brothers and sisters had built their own luxurious summer homes with the fortunes they made and inherited in places such as Rhode Island and New York. Vanderbilt initially bought about 700 parcels of land, including over 50 farms and at least five cemeteries, equating to more than 125,000 acres. Vanderbilt then commissioned New York architect Richard Morris Hunt, and construction of Biltmore began in 1889. Biltmore is the largest privately owned house in the United States at 178,926 square feet, which is more than four acres of floor space. The 250-room French Renaissance Chateau includes 35 bedrooms, 43 baths, and 65 fireplaces. Still owned by George Vanderbilt's descendants, it remains one of the most prominent examples of Gilded Age mansions. In order to facilitate such a large project, a woodworking factory and a brick kiln were built on site, which produced 32,000 bricks per day. A three-mile railroad spur was also constructed to bring materials directly to the building site. Construction of the main house required over a thousand workers and 60 stonemasons. Vanderbilt made several trips overseas during construction to purchase decor. He returned to North Carolina with thousands of furnishings, including tapestries, hundreds of carpets, prints, linens, and decorative objects dating from the 15th century to the late 19th century. Among the few American-made items were the more practical oak drop front desk rocking chairs, a walnut grand piano, bronze candlesticks, and a wicker wastebasket. The Biltmore had electricity from the time it was built, though initially with direct current due to Vanderbilt's relationship with Thomas Edison. With electricity less safe and fire more of a danger at the time, the house had six separate sections divided by brick firewalls. George Vanderbilt opened his estate on the Christmas Eve of 1895, to family and friends from across the country. Guests to the estate over the next course of years included novelists Edith Wharton, Henry James, ambassadors Joseph Hodges Choate, Lars Anderson, as well as U.S. presidents. George married Edith Dresser in 1898 in Paris, France. Their only child, Cornelia, was born at the Biltmore in the Louis XV room in 1900 and grew up at the estate. Income tax was still a fairly new thing during this time, but started impacting the Vanderbilt's rising costs. 
promoting the sale of 87,000 acres to the federal government for less than $5 an acre. After George's unexpected death in 1914 from complications from an emergency appendectomy, Edith completed the sale. She carried out her late husband's wish that the land remain pristine and that the property become the nucleus of the Piscot National Forest. Edith occupied the house sporadically, living in an apartment created in the former bachelor's wing until the marriage of her daughter Cornelia to John Francis Amherst Cecil in April 1924. The Cecils had two sons who were born at the Biltmore in the same room where their mother was born. In an attempt to bolster the estate's finances during the Great Depression, Cornelia and her husband opened the Biltmore to the public in March 1930 at the request of the city of Asheville, which hoped to revitalize the area with tourism. Biltmore closed during World War II. In 1942, 62 paintings and 17 sculptures were moved to the estate by train from the National Gallery of Art in Washington, D.C. to protect them in the event of an attack on the United States. Amongst the works stored here were Gilbert Stewart's portrait of George Washington, as well as works by Rembrandt and Raphael. Cornelia and John Cecil divorced in 1934. Cornelia left the estate never to return, but John maintained his residence until his death in 1954. Their eldest son, George Henry Vanderbilt Cecil, occupied the mansion until 1956, at which point the Biltmore House ceased to be a family residence and was operated as a historic house museum. The estate was designated a National Historic Landmark in 1963. Their younger brother, William A. V. Cecil Sr., inherited the estate upon the death of their mother, Cornelia, in 1976. His brother, George, inherited the more profitable dairy farm. In 1995, while celebrating the 100th anniversary of the estate, William Cecil turned over control of the company to his son, William A.V. Cecil Jr. The Biltmore Company is privately held. Of the 8,000 acres that make up the Biltmore Estate today, only 1.36 acres are within the city limits of Asheville, and the Biltmore House is not part of any municipality. The Biltmore Company is one of the largest employers in the Asheville area. Restaurants were opened in 1979 and 1987, and four gift shops in 1993. The former dairy barn was converted into the Biltmore Winery in 1985. A 210-room luxury hotel named The Inn on Biltmore Estate opened in 2001. In 2010, the estate opened Antler Hill Village, consisting of gift shops and restaurants as well as a remodeled winery and connected farmyard. In 2015, the Village Hotel on Biltmore Estate, a more casual option to The Inn with 209 rooms, was opened. The estate has been used on numerous occasions for film and television, including The Swan, 1956, Being There, 1979, Mr. Destiny, 1990, The Last of the Mohicans in 1992, Forrest Gump in 1994, Richie Rich, also in 1994, My Fellow Americans in 1996, Patch Adams, 1998, Hannibal in 2001, and The Odd Life of Timothy Green in 2012. Several celebrities have also graced these grounds, including business magnates Bill and Melinda Gates, former president Jimmy Carter, newsman Walter Cronkite, and actors Robin Williams, Tom Hanks, Robert Redford, and Anthony Hopkins. And now, are you ready to see this for yourself? Well, we bet you are. So come along and let's start our exploration. You're going to love this. Photos do not give this any justice. You'll just have to come and see it sometime for yourself. But for now, here's a taste of the Biltmore.
Thank you for joining us today. We hope you enjoyed our program. If you like our content, we ask that you give us a thumbs up, a like, share with your friends, subscribe to our channel, and ring that notification bell so you always know when our new content is published. And all of this costs nothing but means a lot to us and keeps us growing. You may also leave us a tip if you choose. The address is provided here on your screen and a link is provided in the description area below. So until next time everyone, this one is history. Hey, and be sure to check out our eBay store under ID, History, and Relics. We're now featuring channel merchandise, starting with our new logo magnet. They're only $5.50, and net proceeds go towards supporting our channel.